Now in this week and in this module, we will study motion and its courses. The study of motion and its courses is a branch in physics we call mechanics. So mechanics essentially is the study of motion and the causes of motion. Now in this particular lesson, we will focus our attention on a specific aspect of mechanics called classical mechanics, in which we will study the motion of objects that we can observe, things like moving people, moving cars, you know, a ball thrown from one person to another. When we study the motion of these objects that we can observe, we call it, it belongs to a class of physics called classical mechanics. Now, classical mechanics actually is subdivided into three parts. The first part is called kinematics. Kinematics is the study of motion without taking into consideration the causes of motion. In other words, kinematics deals with the description of motion. Now the next part of classical mechanics is what we call dynamics. Now unlike kinematics that deals with the description of motion, Dynamics is the study of motion and its causes. The study of motion and the causes of motion. In other words, it deals with the forces that brings about motion. And the last piece is called statics. Statics essentially is the study of systems in equilibrium. In other words, Statics is that branch of Newtonian or classical mechanics that deals with objects with balanced forces. Now, in this lesson, we are going to deal with kinematics, dynamics, as well as statics. And we will zoom in in, in, in its application, how we can apply these principles and concepts to our daily living. So it's going to really be fun. Now, before us, we have a box at rest. An object at rest is not moving. It is not moving because its position really is not changing with respect to a reference point or with respect to a frame of reference. So we have a box which is at rest. And the box at rest essentially means that it is not moving because its position is not changing. In other words, an object is in motion if the position of that object is changing. Now here is the kicker. Naturally, we all know that it is practically impossible for the box at rest to just start moving by itself without being pushed or pulled by another object. It really cannot happen in nature. If I place a box in front of myself, that box will remain at rest until something pushes the box. When that happens, it moves. So essentially, we can conclude that an object at rest will always remain at rest until an external force is applied on it. Similarly, an object in motion will remain in motion until an external force is applied on it. This we call Newton's first law of motion. Again, let's consider the box at rest on a horizontal surface. Without any external influence, it could not suddenly move all by itself. Now, for the box to move, 
it must interact with another object outside of itself. For example, if we push the box forward, it moves forward. Now, as the box moves forward, if we push the box backward, it slows down and eventually stops moving forward. You see, the only reason why it started moving in the first place is because we applied a force on it, otherwise it would have stayed at rest. And the only reason why the moving box stopped moving in the first place is because we applied a force in the opposite direction of motion, that is why it stopped moving. Think about it this way. That an object at rest remains at rest and that an object in motion naturally will stay in motion unless a force is applied on it. You see, when you push the box forward, as you have seen in this example, we say in physics that you are interacting with that box. Let me say that again. When you push the box forward or we pull the box backward, we say in physics that you are interacting with the box. In other words, it is the interaction between you and the box that creates a force which will eventually cause the box to move in the direction of the force. So to summarize, it is the interaction between you and the box that gives rise to the force that eventually will provoke the box to move. So in a simple way, interactions creates forces which in turn brings about motion. It is important for you to always remember this. So without interactions, it would be impossible for something to move. This is a consequence of Newton's first law of motion. Let's go back to our box again. For example, if a boy is pushing a box across a flat horizontal surface, you see the boy is the agent of change that interacts with the box causing it to change its state of motion. You see, initially the box is at rest. When it interacts with the boy, it moves. So its state of motion changes from not moving to moving. So the state of motion of an object can only change in the presence of an external force. And an external force can only exist if an object interacts with another object. So to sum this up, only external forces brings about motion. Only external forces brings about a change in the state of motion.